All right, we got a new R-Series machine today, the um, S76. This one is dead in the water, will not move. Right swash plate out of neutral. Does that sound familiar? I know a lot of us have heard these swash plate issues over the years, and the R-Series is a little different than the M-Series and the earlier machines that, that used a swash plate sensor that was like a potentiometer style. It actually had mechanical linkage inside the pump that would turn the swash plate sensor. The R-Series is now like a Hall Effect type sensor, but, but right now it will not move. So let me show you a little trick if you ever have this happen and you, you're in a situation where the machine's on the road and you have to get it moved. Let's jump inside and take a look at what's going on. All right, so we're gonna turn the machine on. We got our screen come up. We did hear some beeps, but that right there is a uh, angle position sensor, bucket angle position sensor. Uh, no communication, which is uh, fairly common too, but that's not gonna keep us from running. Uh, let's go ahead and get this machine started up. So it does start. Let's go over to uh, the codes here so you can see what we've got. Okay, right now we can see that we've only got the bucket angle position sensor. So what I'm gonna do is see, the machine's locked out. We have to unlock it here on the new R series. So I'll go to unlock. Okay, so now we got another code and we can see that the swash, right swash plate, not in neutral code. And that actually shut the engine off. So now I have nothing. The engine's dead and we know we still got power on the screen, but we can't move or operate the machine. So, um, I want to get it moved a little bit, get the arms up in the air so I can work on it. But let me show you how we can do that. So on the front of the machine, we'll just find two nuts and two washers. We take those uh, nuts off and then we can just raise the cab. It kind of clamshells up just like our M series did, just a little bit different process. So now we're kind of diving into the middle of the machine and you know, right up front here, we can see our charge pump, gear pump. Um, and in behind that is our drive pump. I know all you can see really is hoses right now, but um, we know that we've got a right swash plate issue. So we see our four hoses here. We can see which one, you know, we got a right drive motor here, left drive motor. That's if you're sitting in the seat of the machine. So our right side of the pump, right here, we've got a swash plate sensor for the right side. Now, way back in the back is the swash plate sensor for the left side. So it's a little more difficult to get to, but what we can do is I'm just gonna unplug this sensor. And with the sensor unplugged, that's gonna allow us, now, now the ECU or the drive controller doesn't really know what position it's in, but it will allow us to access or unlock the machine so that we can drive and move it. So I've got it unlocked or unplugged right now. Let's see if I can at least get the arms up in the air and it just gives me a little more room to get in here and work. Actually on the R series, there's quite a bit of room inside here where we can kind of fit in and work from the side. It's just a little more comfortable than diving down in here. So now I can raise my arms up and I can drive it forward and backwards. Now this is just a temporary thing. So as you can see by unplugging that sensor, that allowed me to operate the machine to get the arms in the air and I can even drive it. This is just a temporary solution. You know, the machine is not fixed, but if you're in a bad situation or whatever, you need to move it, get it loaded on the trailer, whatever the deal may be, you can, yes, unplug that swash plate sensor and get it to move for you. So let's take a look at what our swash plate sensor looks like. Uh, this is it right out of the bag and you can see that it, it's got a pickup here. This is like a Hall Effect sensor, like I said, and it, it doesn't have any mechanical dial in it like a potentiometer, like our old style, like the M series and even some of the earlier uh, SJC machines used a potentiometer style swash plate sensor. So I don't know if 
you know, it's, it's kind of a solid state sensor. There's nothing you can do to take apart or repair. So I don't know what the actual problem is with uh, these sensors, but it's not like every machine's going out. You know, I've probably done this five or six times. So if I've done it five or six times in my area, I'm sure other people across the country is gonna see this same issue. Um, there's not really a good way for me to get the camera kind of down in there and show how to take this off, but there is a cover, a bracket on it. And uh, we're gonna have to take those screws out of the bracket, which is like a 2.5 millimeter hex bolt. And um, even the bolts holding the actual swash plate sensor itself are also that same 2.5 mil Allen head um, socket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dive in there, try to get this swapped out real quick, and then we'll see if, if that took care of our issue. So I got the swash plate sensor off and of course, this is the old one, but on top of this sensor is a bracket that kind of goes over the top to kind of protect that sensor. And we've got two screws that kind of come in from the side here that are, yeah, I mean, it's not that they're hard to get to. Like I said, the right one's a lot easier than the left side. You gotta do this all on the back. And like I said, these little 2.5 millimeter hex head screws, they got pain inside of them. So you have to be real careful. Make sure that you get your Allen wrench set in there really good so you don't strip those out. Now your kit, when you buy a new sensor, does come with new screws, but you wanna make sure you can get these out without stripping them out. So uh, just something to be aware of. So I just finished getting that sensor in there. Now we're gonna get the cab down. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt it up. I'm pretty confident that uh, that sensor is gonna take care of it. All right, fire it up, push to unlock. All right, so we do have control and no more uh, swatch plate out of neutral codes. All right, great, everything looks good. Now this machine has like 357 hours on it and um, I don't know, I've seen these fail anywhere between 100 and 1,000 hours. And again, I don't know why. 90% uh, of the ones I do are always on the right side swash plate sensor. So it is that pump that's in the front that's more easy to get to. Uh, but I have done one in the far back pump on the left. It's a lot more difficult to get to, but uh, still not too bad. That's only about a 45 minute job, but cool, man. Our first video of a repair on the R series. Let us me know what you think and thanks for watching.